Hello everyone and welcome back to another Big Ambitions video. I hope you all had a nice Christmas and that Santa brought you everything you wished for and more. Today we are again in my store tester save and if you thought the new store will get away from my thorough testing, well, you were wrong. So in today's video we're gonna put this new store through the same methodical processes we have 8 stores in total, with at least one for each region, while also covering all the sizes available in each region, so small, medium and large. As you're probably used to by now, I like to be as accurate as possible in these tests, and to achieve this I have made use of the blueprint functionality, courtesy of update 0.3. This way we know for sure that every store is built in the same fashion, while also not being bottlenecked by potential human errors during the product assignment process. Most blueprints will use cashiers as opposed to checkout counters and the electronic stores were no different. Because of this, I had to employ multiple customer service agents to ensure that we have enough to cover all shifts. Another important note is that I've made all stores available 24-7, 7 days a week. In a previous video covering the setup of the new electronic stores, I noticed that customers are available pretty much at any given time Therefore, it would be a shame not to have the stores open and capitalize on these profits as well. Additionally, I had to pay attention to what was automatically assigned as available products by the blueprint functionality during the setup process, in particular for the small stores and some of the medium-sized ones. Due to their limited available space, these stores will always be at a risk of not having the possibility of accommodating all available products. Therefore, the game's default will always be to include the most expensive products first. However, this is not how the world works and definitely not what the customers want, which is actually a compliment to how the devs manage to code their behavior. In case you are not aware, in general, businesses make their money not off of the most expensive items, but rather from the lower priced ones, which in turn sell more due to their price. Therefore, in the case of the electronic stores, most of the profits are generated from purchases of headphones and earbuds and not from smartwatches and phones. Of course, the last two are nicely complementing the overall sales, but solely relying on them to make profits would be a bad idea. In terms of pricing, I've kept the defaults with one exception made on the noise earbuds, where I've increased the price to $299. And before we continue to the process, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you all for the support you've been showing. It may not mean much for you, but rest assured your comments, likes and overall engagement means a lot to me. It is the fuel that drives me in making these videos and it gives me great pleasure in knowing that they can help you in your own journey. So again, thank you. Please make sure to leave a like and if you have any suggestions or just want to say hi, leave a comment as well. I always make sure to reply to all of you. Coming back to the video, I've spent a great deal of time reorganizing inventory schedules, assigning employees to all stores, checking that there was enough storage space and making sure that the items sold are the appropriate ones so that the end results are as accurate as possible. After many many trips between stores and calls to various agencies, there was only one thing left to be done and that was to pass the time. After 30 in-game days, here are the results. In this chart you can see all stores in all regions and of course the bars represent their performance. The higher the bar, the better the result. Please note that all charts displayed represent total revenue generated and not only the profits. This means this is the cash figure before paying our employees or the rent for the buildings and so on. Ok, so let's have a more in-depth look. By far the best one out of these 8 was the large store in Midtown, which managed to generate on average 254k per day with a peak of 330. This was closely followed by the large store in Murray Hill, which managed to generate 170k on average with a respectable peak of 229k. And because I know most of you are immediately trying to compare them with the clothing stores, I decided to make your lives easier and include them as well. So by comparison, the difference between the electronic store and the clothing store in Midtown is of 175%. Yes, you heard it right, a large electronic store will perform 175% better than a large clothing store. Please make note that the emphasis here is on large. Moving on to the medium-sized stores, here we have a slightly different result. 
The best performing one was unsurprisingly in Midtown with 46k on average and a peak of 66k followed closely by Murray Hill with an average of 45k per day and a peak of 61k. Garmin District did slightly less with 37k on average and a peak of 49k and Hell's Kitchen achieved 29k on average with a peak of 38. And this is why I've noted that the emphasis for the 175% increase was on the large stores. These performances for the medium sized buildings are roughly in line with those of the clothing stores. There is nothing too crazy happening here. Lastly, the two small stores perform similarly, with Hell's Kitchen taking the lead at 13k average and 18k peak, followed closely by Garment District at 12.9k average and 16k peak. Here, the performance difference compared to clothing stores skyrockets again reaching 200%, which makes the electronic store a more viable option for a small build in case you're interested in that. After all these tests and the results, we can conclude that the electronic stores were created and added as the ultimate profit generator in large stores, mimicking real life with the likes of Apple and Samsung. They also represent a promising option for small builds as the profits generated here are far larger by comparison to any other business. The only place where they don't shine seems to be in the medium sized buildings. That's not to say that they don't perform well. They are, however the difference compared to the clothing stores is just not as mind blowing. And that concludes today's video. I hope it managed to shed more light into the profitability of the newly added electronic stores and hopefully it will help you in a better decision making. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.